that's what pushed me and pushed everyone closer to staying a Jehovah's Witness. It's persecution complex. There they are. There's the enemy. We need to stay together. We're doing it for God. And the things that made me question were when people were kind. Those are the people that helped me get out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Not people screaming, people going, I got you, I understand, and walk away. Welcome on the edge, Tony. How are you doing? I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. This is exciting. I get to talk to you in person. I know, right? And you were saying funny things off air. And I said to you, don't say funny things because now and now we there won't be anything funny the whole time, will there? Well, I, with that and I tried to get into my serious space and now I'm trying to get out of my serious space. So that's, yeah, it kind of threw me off. It threw me off. Here I am. You've got a hell of a moustache going on. Um, there's an actor who's got a very similar look to you and I can't think what his name is, but he's in, is it Sideways? George he's Clooney? In, you know what? Yes, I'm. Yes, exactly, George Clooney. <laughs> Paul Paul Giamatta or something like that. I think I might. I think I might be thinking of him. Is that who I'm thinking of? Uh, some people have told me that, and I say thank you very much, and then I make out with them. But we're not in the same room, so. <laughs> yeah, he wishes that he had your, you know, repute and and wealth and uh, acting abilities. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I oh, love him, God. man. He's great. He's really good, actually, isn't he? And that film, Sideways, is is one of my uh, one of those surprise films that you don't maybe you haven't heard of, and then you pop it on somewhere, and you're like, "Ooh, ooh, this yeah. is a good film." Yeah, no, he's good. I love good actors. I love good actors. Speaking of good actors, I've just watched your film that you wrote the book for and the screenplay for, and I very much enjoyed it. Tell me a little bit about it and what it's called and stuff. Oh, Confessions of a Teenage Jesus Jerk, which is the novel and the film. And I didn't even know they were going to use the same name until um, like the last day of production when I was uh, talking with Eric on set and we were having lunch. And I was like, they were calling it Confessions of a Teenage, teenage Disciple. And that was a placeholder name. And I didn't know what the name was going to be. And I was like, hey, have you, have you know, do you know what the name is? And he's like, yeah, Confessions of a Teenage Jesus Jerk. And I'm like, oh. And he's all, we had to use disciple because there's too many Christians in this town and they'd freak out when they see the word Jesus and jerk when we're trying to get locations. And I went, that's right, you're smart. So, <laughs> well, so Eric that you mentioned, that's the director, that's Eric Stoltz, who, who I knew as the guy that was going to be Marty McFly in Back to the Future before um, it was Michael J. Fox. He was, he was Marty McFly. They, sh they shot, yeah. Yeah, so, and it, it, it didn't it didn't stick. But he was also in uh, quite a few other things, and he directed the film. Was the jerk reference because one of the uh, I read a few reviews as well afterwards, just to sort of you know see what people are saying and stuff. And one of them was sort of saying, "Oh, I don't get this jerk thing because everybody else was a jerk to the main character, which uh, which is sort of you, isn't it?" But the jerk thing was pre presumably a play on words to do with masturbation. I'm glad I'm glad you realized that, and no. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but but at the same time, you know, it, when I was when I when that was the title that finally became the title, um, it was I just I felt like a jerk. So it was kind of like I felt like a Jesus jerk. So, and, and that's how I felt growing up, and that's how that came. And then people have these great definitions about it that are so much better than what I was intending. So <laughs> this, I wish I was that, um, I wish I was that smart, but it, uh, it wasn't, but, sh but it should be. And from here on out, it is. So yeah, the death of the author, they say, um, Roland Barthes, the, the French guy, he was, he was on about that. And that was the, once it's out into our hands, it's, it's no longer yours to, it's ours to analyze and, and say what was really meant. Yeah. And, and at the same time, it's great. I, you know, some people, uh, come out with great uh what do you call it i really like how this compared to blank blank and i'm just sitting there going you know people i didn't know like at the per at the screenings the festivals and stuff i'd be like thanks for noticing that and in my head i'm like wow <laughs> that That's sounds so really funny. cool <laughs> hey did you know tony that the bible actually mentions tennis <laughs> yeah. didn't read diamond deliver that line so perfectly reed was our elder in the car <laughs> he's just like 
Oh my god, it, 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 those actors, they just like they took those words and they like they it, I I I just love the um that that was one of my favorite scenes with Reed because it just shows how talented Reed is. And just the absolute joy that he made a joke. <laughs> it's one of those, it's just his reaction shot after, you know. <laughs> yeah. Does. Yeah, because it it does give us a little insight, I suppose, into uh, oh, what would it be? Maybe the uh, oh, po-facedness or the piousness of of growing up in this kind of religious uh, setting, where there are attempts, I suppose, in in in, in an attempt to mollycoddle a bit or to, uh, to 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 keep the kids happy. I suppose they're trying to make these jokes, and the kind that was the joke. You know, did you know that the Bible actually mentions tennis? Moses served in the court of Pharaoh, and. That's one of the things I find the hardest about religion, I think. It's one of the reasons I found it so difficult from a young age. I was brought into a sort of Jewish family and that kind of thing. And there is a lot of humor in Judaism, I should say. But in the religious parts, it's just that total lack of a proper sense of humor. And and I guess, it was is that what you were trying to get at with that line? And, and was that your experience of, of your childhood around the what you, you'd call them the watchtower? Is that right? Yeah, around the Jehovah's Witnesses and preaching. And I mean, I used to go preaching a lot. And I was even a full-time pioneer, so I was preaching 90 hours a month. But um, <clears throat> so you go out with, you know, these elders and stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes it's cheesy and you're just like, I just want to get out of this car. And sometimes some of them were cool and you actually have real conversations with them. So it kind of runs the gamut. But, you know, if, if I put like the cool conversations I had, um, it, you know, it wouldn't um, it wasn't it wouldn't serve the story um as much but there wasn't really that many cool conversations i guess why am i even thinking there's cool conversations there's there's cool conversations when you tell your friends later you're just like i'm on my leg rubbed up against you know uh love interest and you know that that that's actually the 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 film is actually based on the book that's based on a short story i wrote that is the whole car ride with uh jasmine in the car and our legs just touching and how that was the that was the whole reason to go preaching and be um, in that situation was to just touch her leg. And that like just and, and it was based on a real it was based on a real person, not named Jasmine. But I was just like, you know, as a teenager, I was just filled with like love and everything, you know, it was just like and all and all it was was a leg touch because that's all that's about as far as you can go then, you know. Do you think that came from repression and st- and that kind of thing? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's the thing I keep coming back to. Um, is that theme of, um, you know, the sh- the shaming of, and we were you know absolutely shamed, and the and the and there is there's a lot of masturbation with our with our actor lovely Sasha who. You only saw you only saw the scenes that were that stayed in the movie. You have no idea how many takes he had to uh, pretend like he was masturbating, over and over again to the point where we like on the second to last shoot day when we were in San Francisco locations and Eric would shout out to him, Sasha, we we need some B roll, start masturbating, and it would be he'd be in the street and he would just go to it and he's like, I love it how he's automatic right now. <laughs> he just he go, and he just goes into like he could he could fake masturbate instantly so. I think I think you put that on his resume. <laughs> <laughs> For those who haven't seen it yet, um, the the movie or read your or read your book, uh, yeah, masturbation is a very key. It's a central theme. Uh, it's something that whenever I've spoken to former Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah Witnesses, is it Jehovah's Witnesses or Jehovah Witnesses? Jehovah's Witnesses with an S. Yeah, former former Jehovah's Witnesses and former you know, people from other religions and mm-hmm. stuff. Masturbation is so so key because, and I guess it's because it's. Would you say it's one of the few things that just you might want to hold up all the other tenets of a religion, but that one is particularly for men, but also for women, I suppose. It's just it's just probably not. It might not be possible. It might literally not be possible. And that's the one that's going to give you the shame. Women masturbate? <laughs> yeah. So no. I'm doing this. I, I'm doing a book. I'm doing a book, by the way. I know you're joking, of course. Uh, but uh, about the, about the um, what was it? About secrets, about the psychology of secrets and the things we do at home when people aren't around. So I did a survey 
And I was actually surprised by how high the level of masturbation in women. That includes you listeners. I know what you I know what you're getting up to. And it was like men, it was like ninety nine point nine percent. I think it was one person out of like a thousand who who said they didn't. And I I just frankly don't believe them. But then you saw his hands and they were both in cast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I never have, and he's got like his hands are all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, even he'd find he'd be rubbing against a pillow or something, wouldn't he? Oh, then, yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah, and and the women um, as well. Was, I can't remember what it was, but it was something like eighteen. Oh, I don't know what whatever it was. It was higher than I thought it was, including women in relationships. And I suppose some people would be listening, going, "Well, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be as high as the men?" And so on. You sexist, old fashioned turtle or whatever. So fair enough. But people just do do it, and it, and it is it is more prevalent in men. Um, and that's it. I just, it's not possible, is it? It's, it's just that they shouldn't ask you to do that because that's the one where, do you know what I mean? If they hadn't asked you to do that, maybe you'd still be a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> no, let's not go too far there, sir. Um, no, the, the, the reason I left the Jehovah's Witnesses was for, I, I mean, it, you know, uh, in, the, in the book and in the film, uh, Gabe is kind of he goes through through it a lot quicker than I did so what you so the narrative for me is about 10 years of trying to like discover and I was actually very morally conflicted and I was trying to grapple with the theology of the Jehovah's Witnesses which I knew in my heart was the truth there was no other truth so even into my 20s I was like there's something wrong but I know we're the chosen ones so I had to it was a very um, methodical process of, oh crap, something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong, and a lot. It was a lot of searching. So if they were just like, hey man, you know, uh, we're, we if if you want to become a Jehovah's Witness, we're going to send you a free prescription to Playboy and all the lube you need. You know, that that would have been fine. But still, I would have found the theology and the I, I would have found the <clears throat> the. Um, my insatiable search for um, my questioning, which they don't want questions. They don't like questions. So um, I have found that I like questions and I don't need the answers. I just need people to go. It would be nice for people to go. I don't know that. And you just go, thank you. I don't know it either. It's okay not to know. Was it an oppressive certainty that you grew up around then it was like this oppressive every we know the answers here are the answers and yes. that's it we have the answers here are the answers don't do this stay um don't become fr you know don't become friends with people who aren't jehovah's witnesses they're going to die they are essentially satan trying to take you know you away from us so there's a very um it's very closed group, even though they pretend like they're open. There's, but but there's there's a presentation to, you know, and that's all uh, in the. What do you call it? Yeah, it's kind of like you present yourself as a happy people, and that will bring them to us. And that was the whole thing: is for everyone to come be with us, so everyone can be saved and stop masturbating. I mean, uh, live forever in paradise on earth. <laughs> At least. The thing about the Jehovah's Witnesses, again, going back to growing up Jewish, you guys are sort of the opposite to us because we're we're like a closed shop. We're quite exclusive, um, and we make it really hard. For, and I, when I say we, I don't, you know, I feel like I've left any of those parts. And it wasn't. And when you it, say it hard, you're not talking about. No, I'm not talking about. I just, I just but, but the, 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 we don't have. There isn't so much sexual stuff with the Jewish. But I don't think there's so much repression in that sense. Uh, but we don't recruit. We certainly don't recruit. We do, we sort of feel like if well, there's no hell either. I don't think. But if we feel that other people are going wrong by not being Jewish, I think we're sort of like, yeah, well, screw you guys. We're in the chosen thing. Whereas you, you did you grow up with this feeling of like, I got to help people to not die forever. Is that's got to be a lot of uh, weight on your shoulders? Yes, and also the question that was asked a lot that I also asked was, what happens to people on Earth if we if they did not get our message. Will they still die at Armageddon? And the answer to that was, no, Jehovah will realize their ignorance and they'll live through Armageddon and then we'll be able to ask them if they want to join us. And then, so then I flipped that reasoning on myself and was like, why are we telling anybody then? Why don't we just let everyone live as they live? And I, you know, cause, cause I would, 
I was actually really good at like I could I I was really good at scripture. I mean, I would and I I'd even go to like they want your, their literature passed out and I was and the literature just after a while I was like this is like t- this is like you know reading six stuff read made for a six year old kid. So then when I would go door to door, I would just read a scripture and I would go, "What do you think of that scripture?" And I would and I would have a back and forth because I was just going to use the Bible. And then people would be like ready for me to come again next week. But I wouldn't because if they stayed ignorant, they're going to make it through Armageddon. So I found that little hole in that logic where I'm like, okay, I could show them things and try to make their day better, but I don't want them to know all of this because it's not an easy life. This is a very hard life. Why would I want to put that on them, even though I know the truth and now I'm not ignorant. So now I know what I need to do, which is just, you know, a plethora of rules. Why does that have to be on everyone else? And so I think I had this weird comp, well, not, it's not a weird complex, but my way of saving other people was trying to just keep them ignorant and just go, just be nice to me. Just, just, you know, don't say, uh, I don't know if we can swear on here. Can we swear? Yeah. 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 It's like, don't say fuck Jehovah and you'll be good. You know, it's just like, <laughs> Just, yeah, because you'd be you're condemning them either to a difficult life as a Jehovah's Witness, you know, your job, or if they don't sign up with you, which I imagine most didn't, to eternal damnation. I mean, how often did people? Because I've only ever seen, you know, the the all the sort of jokes or the the videos and adverts and things are people shutting doors in the faces of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I, I I don't I can't imagine anybody who would just answer the door and go, oh yeah, have you heard, you know hearing have I, have you heard the truth and going, please tell me. But were there people? Are there people? Who who are just you know going about their day and then open the door and then they're like oh yeah I'm ready to be converted yeah it's you know I don't know if they, there's not a I'm ready to be converted but I think there's a I, I think people there's there's a there's an inherent loneliness in like the human condition so if someone's coming with a if someone comes to you with a smile and it and it seems legit um, you know I you know, living in San Francisco it's just like someone comes up to you and says hi and you're like the answer is no, <laughs> just like because they're trying to hustle you, or, you know, in the neighborhoods I was in where it was just like, hi. And she's like, no. And they would be like, oh, OK, he's a local and moves on to go mug somebody else. And um, but but if you're you know, if you're in a neighborhood and you go up and you're just <clears throat> you're like, hey, and you know, I the way I used to present is like, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a Bible teacher and um, I just want to show you a scripture real quick. And I was just really good at it. It was just like I was better at that than dating. <laughs> but I would just go up and be like, I want to show you a scripture from the Bible. And I would, and there's there's good things in the Bible. There's good parables. So I'd just go and I'd be like, what do you think of that? And, and they'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then talk to them for a little bit and go, okay, how, well, have a good day. Most, now, don't get me wrong. Most of the time doors were slammed. I was screamed at. Uh, when I was a little kid, the guy had a gun with my dad sitting there. My dad just kept talking to him because my dad was like awesome at that. Um, Continually, he just was clueless. And but then there were times, uh, you know, maybe uh, one out of every fifty doors knocked on is someone that just goes, "Yeah, well, what are you about?" And I just go, "Well, we're kind, of, you know," and just have a conversation, which I actually enjoyed. Because I'm understanding myself more as I get older, but I, I I enjoy discourse, and so even when I was in that belief system and believed it 100%, I enjoyed the discourse and I enjoyed the someone uh, challenge you know not challenging me but asking me a question where I can go, I don't know that but I'll come back or oh you know why that is and I'll turn to another Bible scripture and I'll be like what do you think of this to try to put the puzzle pieces together. But don't put the puzzle pieces together too much, or you'll leave the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> well, that's the thing, isn't it? And 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 what what then went through your mind when you did get screamed at? When people did say horrible things or, or do horrible things, it, it must have seemed incredibly rude. Or or what's going through your mind in that moment? And what are you thinking about their motives? That's why they would shut the door in your face. So very good question. That's what that's what pushed me and pushed everyone closer to staying a Jehovah's Witness. It's persecution complex. There they are. There's the enemy. We need to stay together. So we get back in the car. We're doing it for Jehovah. So we're kind of taking one for Jehovah. Um, So even though it's nerve-wracking, 
we're doing it for God. So we come back together and there's a kind of a love bomb where it's just like, oh man, we did this, this, and this, and we walked away and they're like, good on you, brother. And it's just, it brings you together. And the things that made me question were when people were kind. Um, even growing up as a kid, I had to tell my every teacher, I can't salute the flag because in the Bible it says blank, blank, blank. And the, what they made us write to our teachers in this letter was so insulting to the teacher. It was just like, it essentially said, you don't know what the hell you're doing. We have the truth. Hope you die in hell. Don't let me salute the flag. <laughs> it's just like, but you're like a six-year-old walking up to it. And, and even like when I was in fifth grade, fourth and fifth grade, and they'd be like, Tony, can you lead the flag salute? Oh, wait, I forgot you're a Jehovah's Witness. And they would like absolutely shame you. But, you know, it's just like, it's, and it's just like, and all that did was like, okay, here I am standing up again for Jehovah. One year, this teacher, Mr. Perkins, I went to him and I gave him my letter. And, I, you know, it's the first day of school. Kids are already, ugh, and But you got to set yourself apart immediately from the teacher. And he came up to me and he put his arm around me. He goes, Tony, I got your note. Thank you for that. Don't worry about it. We won't salute the flag this year. And, it, and my, all my anxiety melted. I didn't even know I had that much anxiety. And it's just like, those are the people that help me get out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Not people screaming, people going, I got you, I understand, and walk away. Just, you know. I thought this is, this is something I, I argue with people about quite, quite, or debate with people quite often, because I, I totally agree. And I found time and time again speaking, whether it's to you or to other, you know, somebody dealing with terrorists, for example, like it's one thing, it's, it makes us feel good to shout at a terrorist and or, or to say that they're all, they're all bastards, they're all this or that, but it doesn't actually help because it just makes them further entrenched in their views. Uh, so it's, it's, are you interested in feeling better by shouting, you know, quite understandably shouting at these people who are doing things that might be wrong or whatever, or are you interested in stopping them from attacking more people? I feel thought the same thing with you know child molesters as well not that not that they should be defended for anything they do but that we should try and the ones who haven't molested got to got to go out and actually speak to them and say like hey let's get you into therapy instead of saying you bastard you you have just for your thoughts and then they just go and hang out with other people like them and just have their cognitive biases confirmed but i get shouted at for saying that really Oh yeah, I, 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 it's funny because I never even thought of a child molester being a child molester before a child molester molested a child. Wow, I think that's a yeah. nursery rhyme, and that was Doctor <laughs> Seuss. But um, it does sound it. <laughs> what, what in their thought? Their thought, their attractions, or yeah, or, that or makes, whether it's an I, illness. Or... Yeah, it makes total sense when you just said that. And I didn't even realize that there's that that there's those people in the middle that have those tendencies, and yeah, they you know that's that's when we have to come in with. Um, you know, you need help. Those, those apparently, but I, because I, I did some, I looked into it for a while. Apparently, those people, the ones who haven't ever offended and probably never will, actually make up the majority of these guys. Um, and some of them are sort of on the edge, and you don't know if they're going to offend or not. Those guys need to be in therapy and not shouted at. But this is a segue too. I mean, there has been also a lot of there are issues of uh, child abuse in the Jehovah's Witness Church. Um, and there's what's what's this? It's a two witness rule or something. What's the rule right. about reporting? Right. So yeah, it's it, there. There is no sin unless there's two witnesses or a confession. Um, so you know, just don't have a threesome with kids. And you're good. Oh my god, Tony. <laughs> it is. It is. It is Hashtag horrible, cancel isn't it? Tony. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they won't cancel you. I guess. We've, I mean, you had a difficult upbringing, so. You know, you had to grow up in this thing. So I suppose if anyone can make jokes about it, it's it's you. I'll refrain from doing so from the outside of it, though, with, with, with that in mind. But, I mean, if that's a, not a sin, there's no sin if there are not two witnesses, then why is it a sin to masturbate? You just blew my mind. Uh, no, that's, So, yeah, that, God, you know, that is such a great question. It's all a sin except... Somebody, you know, a, a, somebody can be brought like, you know, I saw if someone said I saw Tony masturbating in the alley behind in the parking lot behind the bowling alley that and it was one person. Then the elders would bring me in and get Tony, were you masturbating behind the, the in the parking lot behind the bowling alley? And I would say no. And they'd be like, all right, case closed. Or if I or if I was just like, yeah, I did. And then they're like, OK, great. Um, if there were two people and I said no, then they would be like. 
there's two witnesses. Um, it's uh, at the same time when you truly believe, you know, I truly believed. So it's, and it's just so hilarious. We're talking so much about masturbation. Was there that, that much masturbation in Jesus jerk? <laughs> In the movie, the movie was absolutely packed full of masturbation. I've never seen so much references to it. Uh, at some point, words pop up on the screen that literally right, yeah, say yeah. masturbation. I think it's I think it's really important though, and I, I think it's a good, it's an interesting one. I mean, again, the reason that was interesting for my book about secrets and what we do at home and stuff is because it is so prevalent, and we can sit here and go, God, isn't that old fashioned and silly that the Jehovah's Witness Church and many other religious institutions, through their sort of purita- puritanity and all that stuff, puritanity is that a word? Puritan totally values. Totally, to me, I, I understood it. So, okay, well, there you go. That's all languages, yeah. isn't it? Um, <laughs> through that um so we'll laugh at them but i mean we still we still pretend that we don't all do it and we still sort of you know to imagine other people doing it's quite a disgusting thing to us so i, I to an extent we're we're halfway there as well in that sort of puritanical thinking and yeah and and sometimes i wonder if it's good to have some shame on it you know it's like it's like when you even when you see a couple like just totally deep throating making out at a restaurant and you're just going not here not yeah, here. that's different. But you're right. You don't want people to start masturbating in public. So you're you're right with that. I de- <laughs> I wouldn't like that that world, that iteration of the world. So we won't. We won't oh my god! This is, <laughs> I'm at the post office. There's these two beautiful women. Let's just drop trowel and go. <laughs> but you were in a very difficult position. I mean. I, I didn't read the book. I watched the film, and I'm happy I did because it gives you this visceral. I know everybody says if you read the book, you, you, any book, you you can imagine it, so it's so much more powerful. But I actually don't think that's always the case. Sometimes when you're watching a movie, you really get that visceral sensation. There are parts that made me cry. There were very emotional bits, and there were bits that obviously made me cringe because it was so embarrassing. And there are times where the character, who is you basically, has to admit to his dad so to your dad you had to admit that you'd masturbated most children don't have to ever talk about masturbation with their parents and and you what did that happen often you had to be like sorry dad i've been masturbating well no <laughs> so um the uh i i believe in the uh so that 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 scene is kind of his final confession to his dad before he's he's leaving uh my dad would read me many Bible literature articles on the need to not masturbate, but he would never bring it up and go, Oh, were you? It was, it was just very, it it was just like, don't. And and then it's just like, of course not. And that's it. So it's just, there's a lot, yeah, a lot of uh, repression. And then one day, you know, they would go visit the relatives and go, Tony, you don't need to go. And then all of a sudden there would be like, where did all the toilet paper go? (laughs) because that's terrifying for any kid but in your circumstance that's really terrifying i mean did you reach a point an age later on after leaving when you thought back and uh, sorry to give you a bit of a gross image here but that your dad just while he was saying that was almost certainly at it himself i gotta call my therapist um (laughs) (laughs) uh you know it's yeah i i one, I don't want to think about my dad ever doing anything as disgusting as that or even having sex. <laughs> that's just, they didn't. I think they did once and that's why I'm here. But I thought I was artificially inseminated. It's so funny how it grosses, it grosses us out so much to think of our parents um, being sexual beings. It's, and, and, and that never goes away. But you know what's even worse as you get older you start is, is thinking that your parents never do do it if they're still together that is i mean mine separated when i was nine or whatever but if your parents are still together and you're like a you know 30 or 40 or 50 years old to think of your parents never doing it is also really sad so i guess the only solution is to just not think about it at all exactly and then if we don't think about it it just goes away (laughs) just push it down (laughs) nothing bad will happen um but it's yeah it there is, I mean, especially when you're doing those committee meetings, which there's uh, one in the film with the elders. It's just like they are asking all those intimate questions of where did you touch her? Did you touch her breast? Did you feel her nipple? Did you, you know, and, uh, and the, the, I'd been through so many of those meetings. And I had one where I was just like, I confessed to touching 
a woman's vagina. You know, I was 18, so, you know. But it's just like, and they're like, did you penetrate? And I said, I don't know. And they're like, don't lie to us, you know. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I did. And they were like pounding me and pounding me and pounding me. And then when I got married and I did penetrate, I was like, oh, it's warm in there. <laughs> it's just like, they, I just, I had no clue what penetration would feel like. And they're drilling me like I would know. And then at the same time, they're probably going home and going, oh, Tony, you know, they're probably wanking it to the bathroom in the bathroom. More thinking about my cute ass than, uh, you know. That was another that was another feeling I got was that that I think you feel that these these guys, the elders, the church elders are actually getting off on getting the full descriptions. They're very graphic in asking, okay, and did this happen and did that happen? And they're sort of getting off on it. There's that and there's but it's also directly from the the headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses. So they're getting all of those questions directly from there. So it's not just like a regional thing. It's like they all ask every single thing make sure you confess to every single thing make sure we have it all cleared up because we are the the three of us are you know you're essentially talking to the channel to god so get clear with god and that so that's kind of the vibe of that when you did leave how did that come about i know it was quite a slow process in in, in real life and 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 how did that affect of course your relationship with your parents as the the, the well-known shunning that happens usually in jehovah's witnesses uh, communities so well i was married to a jehovah's witness um and i got married as a jehovah's witness and four years into our marriage um we we, we weren't we were kind of like just kind of cool and just kind of showing up here and there but still you know, I had I had my uh, my my hand in like going to film festivals and doing little reviews, and I was just reading like insatiably. I was at the library all the time, and I finally told her, I was like, I can't go like to the Kingdom Hall, which is like the church. I can't go anymore. And this was in September of 1999, and the look on her face was like, oh shit. And because and, and, she realized I wasn't kidding, and and it was and it wasn't like I was telling her I can't be a Jehovah's Witness. I was like, I just can't go. Um, and she's like, Can you just go once a month? And I was like, No. And I'm like, Here's the deal. They're saying they're, some of the stuff they say when they t when they talk about the Bible, I agree with. Some of the stuff they say, they're trying to make certain people in the congregation feel bad for not being able to do more. Single moms, it used to drive me nuts that they would harp on single moms constantly to do more for Jehovah, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like the, the people telling them this didn't have kids, it, you know? So that would piss me off when they would shame these women. And so I told her, no, I can't, I can't let that conversation be allowed around me anymore. So I will raise my hand and interrupt them and say, no, don't say it like that because you don't understand the situation of blank, blank, blank because I need to stand up for this now. And she was like, maybe you should stay home <laughs> but, but, and not go. And she thought it was a phase, but it wasn't a phase. That was like a, I still thought it was the truth, but there was something wrong. And I didn't realize that was like, that was the end of our marriage right there. Nine years later, we got divorced, but I didn't realize that Nine years. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, I was the, I was the confuser in the Jehovah's Witnesses. They, you know, the, the elders thought I was fucking everybody, and I wasn't. I was the guy that stayed a virgin until I was married. The, the, it, and, and then when they, like, started to realize that, they didn't know what to do with me. And then I found out, like, all these people who were, like, you know, so-called, like, studs in the congregation, they all had sex before they got married, but they repented. And I'm like... Why have you guys been after me? I'm the one. And it's, they just didn't get it. And then they also didn't get when I just stopped going. You know, some people leave and they leave with a bang. They're like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go have sex with anyone I want. I'm going to go do drugs. I'm going to. They, they break loose and try to do everything that they've not been doing. And I was just like, I like to read and go to film festivals. And all I did was just keep reading and going to film festivals and started writing and taking writing classes. So they had nothing to like sit there and go, he's, 
oh, he's going against, uh, oh, he's reading a book, you know, and books are like kryptonite to them. They're like, oh, mm-hmm. other words, huh? <laughs> they, you know, well, I hope it doesn't say anything bad about the Jehovah's Witnesses in there. No, it doesn't. It's really good. It's called Naked Lunch by William Burroughs. Oh, oh hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they'd see a book like that. They wouldn't even know what it was. And yeah. they're like, well, well, Naked Lunch is quite extreme. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's what I was reading, and that's what was opening my mind, and that's, and I was just like, wait, this is out there, this is out there, and, you know, it blew my mind that, and that that's why, I mean, that's why I essentially worship books, I worship storytelling, and I worship, I worship the written word, because I was able to have conversations with the dead, I was able to have conversations that no one would have conversations with me about, I was, a, I was able to emotionally connect in ways that I can never emotionally connect within the Jehovah's Witness community. Now I love being in the writing community so I can emotionally connect with other writers. And that's um, what a glorious blessing that is. But it's just like, yeah, the books, the books open, the books just, it, it, they just touched me. And it's, and it's, and I'm just lucky that I get to write and I get to teach writing. And it's, you know, it's, 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 it fills almost every itch that I have except for the, uh, the rash on my foot. Yeah. Well, you know, books are beautiful. I feel, I feel the same way. It really, there's nothing quite like it. You disappear into this different world. And as you say, you do sort of strike up this interaction with someone who might've been dead for uh, a few hundred years. But what about your interactions then with your wife? So you had a few, it was nine years. Um, yeah. Was, is she still part of that then? Could, yes. Would, yeah. You, oh, I, I just, it's <laughs> um, so mad to me. It's so hard to get my head around because I just feel like if my girlfriend was to say, hey, let's stop going to that particular place. I know that I'm being facetious. I'll just be like, oh, really? You don't want to go? And she'd be like, no. And I'd be like, all right. I, I, maybe we shouldn't go in. I don't know. But she just wasn't going with you on this at all. Well, because it wasn't just her. It was. It's a community and her whole family's Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> and that you know her brothers were elders in the congregations so so she told me please don't tell anybody that you're doing this and i said okay not a problem because i cuz i what i found out later is um i have issues <laughs> i have loyalty issues i i'm lo- i i was loyal to the wrong people but when you grow up in the jehovah's witnesses you're essentially loyal to the wrong theology so you're really good at being loyal to the wrong people so i was loyal to her and said yeah i'm not going to tell anybody so i was very low key and it wasn't like i was doing anything that was going to get me in jehovah's witness trouble and um but the you know the years went on and the um and, and and let me preface this with a bad marriage does take two and it's just and a Jehovah's Witness marriage is kind of just like a bad marriage <laughs> it's just like it's a setup for a bad marriage it's not there they don't let you have sex before you can't test drive the car you don't even know what intimacy is you know it's just intimacy is all of these things we need to we need to know if our bodies connect we need to know these things and they don't give you that um and so, but, so I was, when I was writing Jesus Jerk, I was writing that while I was married and uh, she was begging me to uh, use a pen name. And I was like, no, this is the truth. This, this is my truth. I can't use a pen name. And she's like, well, what gonna, what's going to happen when people find out? And then, and she was traveling a lot on business and she was doing a lot. Of, she was a makeup artist. So she was doing a lot more industry parties that I wasn't invited to anymore. She doesn't, she didn't have a plus one. It turned out she'd been cheating on me for years. <laughs> so, well, that's not very and, Jehovah's Witnessy, is it? Well, it's in here. So then, then she, then I don't even know I'm getting divorced. She just leaves, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And then I see money being taken out of our bank account, and I'm like, "Hey, you know what? Can you tell me how much money you need because we have I, we have checks out?" Is I was really clueless. It turned out our landlords knew I was getting divorced before I was getting divorced, and it was um. It was this like pregame that she had been doing, and the um, so she attributed. So what happened was, since I had written a book, and then they were coming after me when they found out I, that I wrote a book. It was just like, wait, what? And I'm like, oh, so you know, like, <laughs> you know, 
sucking cock on a Sunday with some dude over there. And, you know, that's not the problem. The problem with our marriage, and they were telling me, the problem with your marriage is you left. And I'm like, no, the problem with our marriage is she's been fucking other guys. Um, how can you not, you know, and they were just like, oh, don't say it like that. And then they're like, can you please not put that book out there? It's just going to be harder for us to preach. And I'm like, I don't even have a book deal yet, you know, and, and I'm disgusted that these people who were so-called my friends were coming after me. And so I was seen as a spiritual abuser. And I'm like, I'm the guy that drove her to the kingdom hall on Sundays to make sure she got there. I was very, I was so respectful of all of this. Were, were you to find out she's been cheating were you I, I suppose with the divorce I'm, I'm gonna guess here right I'm gonna do the thing journalists aren't supposed to do and I'm gonna go, go I'm, I'm supposed to just ask you but was there a mix of relief because it was like oh finally this is gonna come to an end and also anger and jealousy because she'd been fucking someone else oh good question uh I was devastated because I had no clue it was coming I didn't even have the idea of getting divorced and I think that's because of the Jehovah's Witnesses. You just get married and you're married till you die. So the, the thought it didn't even cross my mind. Um, the, um, I wasn't jealous. I, I even told her this because I, I, I was like, when I found out, I was like, you know, I'm not, I, I even told her I'm not mad about the cheating. I'm mad about the lying. You know, it's, it, we can talk about this. We can go to therapy for this. I was offering suggestions. It was like, no, 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 no. Um, and so and I, it's, it was just, it blew my mind that I wasn't a husband anymore. Blew my mind. That that was, and it's, uh, I was just shattered. And then all of this other pressure coming at me. And then... Um, and it, and it was funny because, and, and this syncs, and I don't, the synchronicity and time blow my mind. But the final draft of Jesus Jerk that I wrote that took me three years to write the book was done about two weeks before I found out that she was cheating on me. And I think I needed to stay in denial for that story to happen and to keep my anger out of it and, and, to, make it, and to make it a story that, because that story... For me, it wasn't a big get at the Jehovah's Witnesses. People, uh, ex Jehovah's Witnesses watch that and are like, "Oh, you really got one over them," you know. And I'm like, "If you," I was like, "Interesting. Read the book again because the, I say nothing bad about the Jehovah's Witnesses. I all I do is present what I went through, and this is just my identity and my and my experience. But I did research it like a journalist. So when I was picking things that happened to me, I would look. I would reach out to. Uh, ex Jehovah's Witnesses in Florida, ex Jehovah's Witnesses in North Carolina, and go. Did this happen where you're at? Is this was this a regional thing or was this a, um, a national thing? If it was regional, it stayed out of the book. If it was national and it was known, that's what stayed in the book, and that's what stayed in the film. Everything. It, it was. I was a. I was a nut about it, but. It, but I, but I also wanted to sh it's I wanted to show the good the good the so-called good but there is good in the people who are Jehovah's Witnesses these are these aren't people that are malicious these aren't people that are trying to get you I was one of them I was I didn't feel like I was malicious I thought I was doing my part um, well, well and, some of them did come come across as malicious and uh, particularly the father figure I mean do you do you speak to your parents? Well, are your parents around, and, and do you speak to them, and did you speak to them after leaving? Uh, so yeah, I I stayed with uh, in touch with them. My parents like they left before I left, uh, oh. and yeah, my dad had a nervous breakdown, and that was um, so. And my uh, and there a lot of a lot of stuff went down. Stuff that it it was so much tragedy that if I put it all in the book or in the film, it wouldn't make sense. But my uncle killed himself. My um, my uh, sister attempted suicide. My dad had a nervous breakdown. It's like all this stuff came down. They left the Jehovah's Witnesses. I went in deeper to the Jehovah's Witnesses. So at on that year, and um, why was I bringing all that up? About your relationship with your parents now and or, or, or since then. Right, and it's so so it was. It's a little more complicated than the simplicity of the storytelling because the complications of the truth wouldn't make any sense 
it would be an epic and it would be boring. <laughs> you know, it's like the um so I still talk to my parents to this day. Um good. Uh my mom still believes but she doesn't really actively participate. And so when, you know, I sit, and when I like make silly jokes like, "Oh my god, Jehovah found me a parking place." She goes, "Oh, Tony." You know, she just she doesn't <laughs> even want she doesn't even want to hear those things because it's just like, you know, it's uh and then she's like, but I understand. Are you relieved you guys are you relieved you guys are out? Uh, like that they're out or I'm out? That you and them are or, or the all three of you are out of the Jehovah's Witness group now. Um it, it doesn't feel like cuz the th I don't think the three of us are connected on how we left the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um I never even thought of it that way. I I'm very I'm relieved I'm out. I know that I'm dealing with the DNA. My DNA had, still has Jehovah's Witness in me. And so um, what I do is I don't fight it. I just kind of go, oh, okay. That's that's kind of explains why I do this or why I'm thinking like this. And um, I just try to stay open to things. Uh, and uh, with my parents, I, I feel like they, you know, they don't, they kind of, don't want the, they don't want deep conversation they, they don't want to talk about uh, uh. <laughs> hey what about uh, uh. <laughs> so that's um there i i guess i come at this i not only leaving the jehovah's witnesses but i th feel like i come at life a little differently than they do because because you know there's people that just don't want to think too much about things it takes them to bad places do you miss parts of being in the Jehovah's Witness community? There is, so this is what's kind of mind-blowing, is you have, I, I had like thousands of friends. I can go anywhere in the world and crash on someone's floor. Um, I, I was, they would, this kind of upset the Jehovah's Witnesses. This was kind of a little touchy. They're like, if you're popular in the Jehovah's Witnesses, that's not a good thing. But I was quite popular in the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I would go to those, conventions where there were 10,000 people. And the minute I walked in the door, I'd be like, hug, hug. Great to see you. Great to see you. There was this huge camaraderie and there was this, you know, and we did have those dance parties. Um, we even, we, there's another, uh, in the, in the book and in the film in the script, we had another dance party, um, that showed, cause I used to go to other congregations. I go to the Spanish congregation and just, and it just, it really brought us all together. You know, the, the congregation I was in was strict against it. It was kind of, that was a little more regional. So I would just go to Oakland where it was just like the black congregation had dance parties. And I'm like, well, I'm going there. And, um, and, and they were great. And it was just like, we, you know, we were just drinking soda and we were just a bunch of kids and we were just sweating it out for four hours while three elders were chaperoning and, and but it's that, that that didn't feel weird at all. That was just like lovely, and I would seek that out. Um, and then you find out that those relationships are based on you have to think like this. But 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 if you don't think like this, where you're cut off immediately. And so those relationships aren't based on truth. So then, so, but, so that's, I still grapple with that. I still grapple with, I mean, I, I don't grapple with it as much. I've been in therapy a lot, but I used to, I used to be a lot more just everyone come in. Oh yes, everyone, everyone. Oh, you're a drug addict. Oh, you're stealing from me. Oh, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't dawn on me that things like this happened. And then I had, and I had to have good barriers because barriers weren't there. And it's, there's the barriers are, um, healthy barriers, healthy boundaries where you go, oh, that might be a problem, you know, uh, punk rocker. Well, speaking of like this, so the therapy and stuff, I mean, I mean, how is that growing up uh, in such a repressive place and growing up, you know, being taught to feel shame around any kind of sexuality and feelings towards girls of your age or whatever it might be? Um, has that had any sort of lasting effect on you? Oh, totally. I, um, it's funny because after, after uh, well, when the divorce was happening, I ended up in another really bad relationship fast. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah, because patterns don't change unless you change, right? So I needed to change. And then what I did, I, I, was, um, I was living in this place called the Tenderloin in San Francisco. I just, I, I, it's, it's, you know, a, a different neighborhood. 
and um and you know when the bars closed and I used to be like I used to cover music for the San Francisco Chronicle and I was I was at like shows all the time even when I was married I'd be out at shows all the time and I was kind of really connected to that uh scene and I was I was hanging out with this one uh girl one night and it, it not like me and her had anything going on together it was like 4 a.m. she goes Tony she goes like you got to you got to see the animal in you you're a man you got to go act like an animal and you just got to go you just got to go and fuck a bunch of people and it just kind of like yeah maybe I should give that a try so I did I was trying to do one night stands um and I was good at getting into bed I was bad at getting out of bed because they're kind of like, what are you still doing here? And I'm like, well, I want to make you breakfast and we can go antiquing it. It's just, <laughs> they're like, they're like, no, I used you. You used me. Get out. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was just, so it was, but that was a good experience to have. And some of those one night stands, I'm still, I'm still, you know, 10 years down the road, very good friends with these women. And it started because I met them and we had sex. And they said, get out. <laughs> and I was just like, what? And then they, I, bet, and then they, I bet more men than you'd think can, could relate to that. I think, like, obviously, the, the stereotype is that men all love one-night stands and stuff. I think if, if men could be honest about that, I think a, there are a lot. And I'm sure women as well will know a lot of men who got a bit uh, needy or clingy after what, when they just wanted a one-night stand and the man wanted something more. So I think that's that's actually fairly common. And it must be even more so, obviously, coming from your background where you know you expected any sex is supposed to be for life. Yeah, it's but I, I, I enjoyed that. I was just like, okay, oh, wait. I do have that. I have, I have. Uh, what would you call it? Sexual, like sexual confidence, and I could walk up. You know, I could walk up to a female and go, "Let's let's put our dirty parts together." And they're like, "That's a great idea," and um, and at the same time, I realized that's not how I want to have sex. And I realized for me, I could only have sex with people who I feel like are relationship material. So I, I kind of really pulled back, and I don't know if that's a Jehovah's Witness thing or if that's just, but, but that type of intimacy, I want, um, I want it to be important. I, I, I want it to be, um, you know, I'm not like oh, we're gonna wait until we get engaged, you know, I in my head, or even not wait till a relationship, but in my mind, I'm vibing it and going, oh, this is a person I could spend years with, and that's when I feel like. Um, that's, that's, that's when I feel like sex is great because sex is also intimacy and it's, it's everything. It's everything encompassing, you know, I love relationships. I, I rather, I love dating when I'm in a relationship, dating the person in the relationship, a I, long-term relationship. Are you with someone now? No, I'm not. So my number is 415. Yeah. No. <laughs> People, get in touch with Tony. He's got a, a, a nice Paul Giamatti uh, moustache and everything, and he's a handsome catch. I think people should – maybe someone will. It's the kind of thing you hear about, isn't it? Uh, years down the line, you go, oh, we met because of a podcast or something. And, and if it and if it happens and say like seven years from now, we I end up – me and her end up getting married, you're the best man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I might be busy that day though. What, when, which date was it in seven years? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's two. It's two thousand nine, two thousand twenty nine. Uh, it's gonna be a June wedding. Yeah, if you're busy, just send just send money. June two thousand twenty nine. I am. I I'm washing my hair, Tony. <laughs> I, I planned the whole month for that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Gold, former BBC journalist. I got a little tired of restrictions over who I could interview and what I could say and do, so I made this channel. Click this playlist here, and I'll be seeing you on the edge.